You're right. Well, let's keep the conversation about UAVs going. I want to talk about digital twins, and this is a research that's coming out of MIT's Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics by a recent PhD grad, Michael Captain. So let's before we get into this, let's talk about what digital twins are. They're essentially a mathematical representation of some sort of physical asset. So you can think of it as a vehicle, a human body, anything. You have a computational model of it ready for analysis, for data gathering, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What's interesting about digital twins is that they are very, very helpful. For example, it's used a lot in the medical realm for recreating a patient's cardiovascular system, taking into account the current prescription that they're on, their diet, their past illnesses, putting it together to come up with a path forward for how to address an ailment or how to do a procedure. It's even been used before, fun fact, I did some digging as we were researching this topic, to bring back Apollo 13 where they're having their mission Dang. crisis. That's that, awesome. That's super cool, right? But the downfall here is that to create a digital twin, it's typically pretty resource intensive. So where digital twins would be great is if you can deploy it at scale for having a, you were talking about UAVs, let's say you have an entire fleet of UAVs and you want to monitor their health as they go out and do Amazon deliveries, let's say. But to create one for each physical UAV would just be way too much for it to make sense for any company or for any entity right now. That's where Michael's secret sauce comes into play. Okay. He's established this framework that allows you to create a relationship between the physical asset and the digital body, the digital twin, by being application agnostic. So, so it doesn't matter if you're using it for cardiology or for UAVs or for cars. He's found a way that, you know, basically takes the relationship between the physical and the digital realm for all of those applications? Yes, exactly. And th that's what I think is interesting here. Uh, I, I want to try to relate to people a little bit. So a good example of a digital twin is if you're using Google Maps, that little dot on your phone, that's technically a digital twin of your location in your car okay. and your app. So that's a very, very simple digital twin. Exactly. And the only parameters it really cares about are what your GPS is giving back to it, your latitude and your longitude. But let, let, let's take a look at a bit more advanced version of Google Maps. And let's think about Google's self-driving car like Waymo, right? It has a bunch of LiDAR sensors. It has, you know, the car itself. You want to monitor its health as it's going around and picking up people, what's happening to it. Very quickly, this escalates, right? The, the number of data you need to model and the relationships that you need to connect to each other. Michael's framework should take care of that. And the only thing that the engineers at Waymo would have to do is calibrate the device by instantiating those in initial variables, these initial okay. connections between the physical asset and the digital asset. Let me see if I've wrapped my it's head around this because yeah, it seems try, pretty try complicated. To it. Basically, digital twins are just a digital representation of a physical object. So yes. in your Google Maps analogy, the little dot on my screen is a representation of my car driving on the road. And Absolutely. The digital twin and the physical twin need to pass information back and forth. So, you know, you need to know about the physical location of your car and you also want the context that the digital twin has in Google Maps of where you're located and where you're going. So what it seems like, what Michael Captain's uh, research does is basically you make a highway to connect the two to allow data to be passed back and forth between the physical and the digital realm and it's replicable so you can copy paste it for any type of digital twin. Is that right? That's exactly right. And I love that you use the highway analogy because that's what you're doing. You're send, sending data back and forth. So they tested this out with a UAV with Aurora Flight Sciences. And what's interesting here is that they calibrated their model using this framework. And once the UAV started actually flying, they had sensors on there for the wing to analyze its stress and strain during flight. So using this data, the model could tell the UAV, hey, we're experiencing too much stress on the left wing, make this adjustment to your flight pattern to avoid that moving forward. And what's great about this is that in the future, if a UAV is making a delivery and it experiences some you know, severe weather or something that damages its wing, the digital twin can make the assess assessment of whether or not this is critical or whether or not we can keep flying and maybe land somewhere else for maintenance down the road. I want to 
take this even a little bit further and say where I think a cool application for this could be is in health monitoring, especially with something like an Apple Watch, right? Yeah. That's a sensor that's on you. You create your profile in the health app. Maybe you start even inputting the kind of food you're eating on a daily basis and it's monitoring your heart rate and your activity and you create a digital twin of yourself that can give you feedback on maybe you should sleep more, maybe you should exercise more, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I'd be looking forward to that. A little like digital representation of myself that can give me a gut check on how I'm doing health-wise just based on some data that my Apple Watch can take. I'd be really excited about that. And it seems like Michael Captain's research is like well on the way to uh, giving Apple a chance to do that with the Apple Watch. Definitely. And again, that's the best part about it. It's application agnostic, not just Apple, not just Aurora. It's for everyone now. That's exciting.